Finland Saga Season 2 Episode 19. The Battle of Kettle's Farm. Damn. This is happening. This escalated so quickly. It's kind of crazy, right? It's kind of crazy. You're fighting the king. Snake always very dedicated to his job. At least we got a home field advantage. Speaking of dedicated, man, Kettle is just all in. Does that guy have a pot in his head? He had like a wok. <laughs> this is the greatest day of Thorgal's life. Good luck, Thorfinn. You got your work cut out for you. I ain't gonna stop this one. Back into war again. But running away, I don't know. I don't know. That's tough. Nice to see you, by the way. Our reunion was totally interrupted. Leaf? You don't know the half of it. He found a little piece, and maybe more importantly, he found a purpose. What a road it's been to go from the beginning to here. It really doesn't fare well for the baby. Right. Remember when that kid said Leaf wasn't a warrior? Do you know who the real warriors are? I mean, we outnumber them, right? I mean, it probably is an elite force, but we have numbers, maybe? And we got home field advantage, we got fortifications, we have battle towers, and we got Thorgil and Snake. And notably, Canute does not have Thorgil. It's really feeling like Seven Samurai meets 300, the battle for Kettle's farm. It's just a patch of land, but it's it's so much more. Stand against a tyrant, and it's Thorfinn's return to the battlefield as a new person. Mailed it. It's a little to the left. <laughs> oh my god. What were you saying about range? How are they so good? How are they so accurate? They're shooting from boats. Well, and you already lost the beach. Five seconds have passed. All right, I may have, I may have mis, uh, I may have underestimated this army. They look pretty elite and organized. I want to see how the guests react. Been living this luxurious life, fighting off small bandits this whole time. Yes. Offer him some of this wine. Perfectly safe wine. Nevertheless, <laughs> I will stain it with blood. This is a really famous war tactic, where you don't put your enemies back against the wall. You give them the knowledge, you put the idea in their head that they can flee, that they can escape unharmed. That lingers there in the back of their mind as an option, so when things get rough, the weak will abandon. There's the famous Metal Gear Solid quote, A cornered fox is more dangerous than a jackal. I'm not really sure how dangerous jackals are now that I think about it. But if your options are fight or die, you will fight with every fiber of your being. <laughs> Every time I see this in media, I always think this is a really difficult job, this whole message bearing thing. That they survive so much is pretty amazing. For some reason, I thought that was Thorgil, but it's Kettle. He looks transformed. Just another day in the office for them. It's like reverse 300. <laughs> They're underestimating them. I mean, one guy's wearing a wok, so <laughs> that says a lot about their these forces. This guy came to fight in his pajamas. <laughs> Dargill. I don't like it's he's a terrible person, but you can't help but love something about him. 
デンマーク屈指のツアモノゾロイだぜトールギルの元戦友たちだつつまりあれですか You have a great time bullying slaves トールギルさんくらい強えと What do you do now? あいつらは朝から晩まで戦争のことしか考えてねえ連中だ For them it's probably just routine 旦那にはそれがわからねえらしいお前ら逃げたきゃ逃げろ。Oh yeah, experiencing it is going to be a whole different thing. This is a terrible example, but it just comes to mind. If you like playing and watching basketball, if you watch a professional game or even a college game, it doesn't really look like they're doing anything that special. You can't really perceive the, the gap between skill levels. If you ever happen to be on the same court as somebody who played in college or an NBA player, you feel just how far away they are, how far above you they are in ways you don't even understand. You can't even comprehend it. It's just so innate to who they are and what they've built over the years. They're way bigger than they are. They're just totally maximized for perfection compared to you the layman maybe more relevantly if you try to spar or box with anyone who's trained in boxing anyone who's ever fought professionally it's just an absolute nightmare for you you have no shot at all ever there's a really powerful dunning kruger effect when it comes to fighting you watch movies and you think like oh, i just punch the guy right or whatever you just hit, hit them if you actually have been in fights you understand that you're probably not ready to fight unless you've trained seriously for it uh, Wait, he's fighting Or he may go in for a special assassin attempt or something. It's not snake style. Who's going to put the bell on the cat? They could not. Snake feels like somebody who has so much potential wisdom, but just has picked a very low cause or hasn't found a higher cause that matches his, his depth. やっとの思いでたどり着いたと思ったらなんだお前はわしに言おうかまったくの別人だったんだこれが。He adopted someone else's personality. 語ってんだよ。Oh, no. <笑>たまたま名前が同じなのをいいことにな。はあ、呆れたぜ。よく今までバレなかったな。Six just keeping this secret. He still took Snake in. I mean, I guess there's a little bit of a debt there. そろそろ飯代を払わないとな。Like I said, kind of low purpose. Maybe he's burned on largely by guilt and like a lack of self worth, which he seems to be struggling with. This says a lot about him that he's telling the truth. I mean, the truth doesn't really benefit him at this point, it only benefits them. Oh man, but they, they just adore him. Respect for them, actually. Like, I expected them to flee, but they're loyal to him. Oh, there you go. A little bit of integrity, I guess. I mean, for Kettle's, to Kettle's credit, he's really acting the part. This is what love will do to you. This is what spurned love will do to you. Let's turn you into an absolute monster. There's Walk Guy again. There's two Walk Guys. <laughs> As pawns, as a decoy. So you approach from the sea, going through the back. I don't know if they have much time. This looks like it'll be over pretty quickly. That guy has a. That guy has a. Wait. <laughs> is he wearing a bucket? He's wearing a bucket. This man is wearing a bucket. He has a wooden bucket on his head. Oh, and they even drew in the two walk guys in the background. I mean, a lot of them are unprotected. They have no head covering at all. Some I feel like that's better than the bucket. I don't know which is worse. Wow, did he not even share the plan with his father? His father also just a pawn in this game. We both know. It's embarrassing when, when someone tells a lie that both people know is a lie. Uh huh. Kettle's army used arrows. It was not very effective. I got people to take care of. Hurts to run away, but I mean. I don't know, man. That that guard episode made Wagon seem pretty pretty awful around here. Just be happy we're taking you along after we found the real Thorfinn. How you doing, Einar? Honestly, I think your old master's gone. He's not the same kettle. I mean, it was always in there, but his worst qualities have just come out to take control. 
these wagons. Is she having a garter moment? It's really been like that for Arnie lately. They could have multiple meanings. They could simultaneously be a, a giving up or a desire to keep fighting. They're just thinking a deer and a wolf. This is a little more optimistic, a little hopeful. Maybe this is one situation where you don't want to get the kids out of the forest. I think she's going to make it. She was close. There's something about this show, this season, that is just crushing these these fantasies. They don't always work. But first Thorfinn, then Garter, now Arnid. They're all just so powerful. The wolf and the deer is something I don't really know what to make of, but I still I felt it, if that makes sense. It still had an impact. There's something very zoomed out and blissful about being in this evil forest, but having these two beautiful creatures, one of which is a, is a carnivore, but was depicted elegantly. It's possible that very directly from her subconscious there, uh, Thorfinn and, and Aner, because the next part was that life is still in the forest and that you need to say goodbye, you need to thank the people you care about, the, the goodness that does exist. She hasn't lost all hope. I also like that now in the state of her mind, the way it came forth in this hallucination or fantasy or dream, Garter is the man he used to be. She seems to have made at least some peace with that whole thing. She's able to now see him for his best, for his core, and love him despite all the things that happened. This is us, easily defeating this small group of soldiers. Now that's a helmet. They're, they have a, a brand. They have a theme, all these eyes. That plays right to Thorgal's plan. He says from the, from the middle, from the back. Uh-huh. Knut's army used sword. It was super effective. I was about to say, it looks actually really difficult. Where's Thorgil? Did he just send Omar in alone? Oh my god. Oh my god, Omar. This is you living the dream. Great warrior, Omar. Right, there he is. He's just walking. I, I don't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sleep on Knut though. Knut is an excellent... Strategist, tactician. He's proven that time and time again. Even when you think you've got him, you don't really know. Someone as good at conquering as Canute knows when to use weakness as a strength. I can't emphasize how much I appreciate this season and what it's done. It's been riveting throughout. I mean, even with just Einar and Thorfinn working on the farm, there's a life to it. There's a quality to it, a richness to it that comes out in, in every scene. And now we've reached what feels like the beginning of a climax with, with a lot of action. But it's so much more than what you might expect or what it could be because of what's been built. The characters are so alive. There's so much heart and there's even hope in all of this this tragedy that this tiny farmland feels like the world. It's a battle of a few hundred, but it, it feels way bigger than that. It feels like a battle of empires. And a lot of that is ideological. And in the middle of that, you have this fantastic dream sequence, let's call it, for Arnheed, who's in mortal danger with the, the deer and the wolf being extra strong. Striking. I think it probably is Thorfinn and Einar. Thorfinn being the wolf, Einar being the the deer. It just feels right. And also the fact that they, they are different spectrums of the circle of life, but they seem to be standing side by side. That could perhaps be a symbol of hope in light of this whole battle, in light of the, the violence that Arnie has experienced and the death of Garter. They are beacons, and they are beacons for the show as a whole. Thorfinn, I mean, obviously Thorfinn's journey is great. Right, and it's really powerful, and he's maybe the most developed. He's gone the farthest into darkness, and so his light feels extra powerful, extra supported. But I also, like, I feel so profoundly affected by by Aner, who is just there. You know, he's just that person, and he gets it. And he's just got Thorfinn's back, and he, he understands what Thorfinn has to say. That is the mark of a truly great man, and someone really deep and intelligent, heartfelt. And so they're very different, but they, they both are moving in their own way. And then you have the fact that they're fleeing, 
And for Thorfinn, there's something kind of sad about that, or it just feels gut-wrenching. Because you know how much he hates violence, you know how much he hates war, and how he wants to prevent prevent it, how powerless he probably feels, how acutely he probably feels the, the pain of what's going on. The only saving grace being that at least he can focus on helping people that he knows and, and cares about. And they're fleeing. But compare the feeling behind Thorfinn and Einar running away in this cart, trying to save Arnheed and escape the battle, to Kettle, who is seemingly brave, you know, outwardly brave, on the battlefield issuing commands, but exudes this feeling of smallness and cowardice, despite being the, the standard warrior of the world of Inland Saga. And you have Olmar, who could make a difference and be a warrior, but it's just, you know, sniveling, cowering on the shore, calling for his big brother. And, and then Thorkell just like, loving it all, just being the the, the true carnivore, the unrefined beast of the forest. Though to his credit, at least it's in defense of his homeland, even if that's not his entire motivation. And then Snake, who, I mean, Snake is kind of a sad character for me too, because I feel his greatness. I feel his capacity for, for real depth, real heart, real power as a, as a person. But he just doesn't have the vision. You know, his vision is too low, it's too small. It feels like he's driven by his burden, driven by guilt or a lack of anything bigger to aim at or a lack of vision of self, a lack of appreciation of self, a lack of belief in a future and so what he's gonna fight and kill and probably die because it's his job more or less because it's in front of him because he's trying to mend certain things in his heart or answer certain questions about who he is just unbelievably rich throughout and i didn't even get to the best character of all walk helmet man <laughs> <laughs>